It wasn't going to be good for me. I knew that. And we talked about this um, even yesterday, but one verse I did not get to share with you is found in Hebrews chapter 9. So I'm going to ask you to go, ask you to go with me to one more place. And I, this is a common verse. I, I realize that. But it's a verse I think we need to at least read and talk about a little bit because it goes with this particular point. And it's found in Hebrews chapter 9 and in verse 27. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. The Hebrew writer says, And inasmuch as it is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes the judgment. So here the Hebrew writer says that when it comes to everybody, I don't care who you are. I don't care what the color of your skin may be. I don't care if you're rich. I don't care if you're poor. I don't care if you're male or female, if you're educated or uneducated. I don't care if you're married or single. I don't even care where you may live in this country or across the globe. According to the Hebrew writer, every person is going to experience at least two things. At least two things. We are all going to die. We are all going to exit out of this life. And we will appear before the Lord in judgment. We will die. And we will appear before the Lord in judgment. Those things are guaranteed to happen to every single person across the globe. And being a Christian, brothers and sisters, prepares you for those events. It prepares you. It gives you hope when you die. It gives you security when you die. It gives you the assurance that you need that when you die, everything's going to be okay. Being a Christian prepares you for death and the judgment. And the question we got to think about is, are we ready for that? Are we ready to die? Even if we die today, I know that's not the best thought to think about this morning, but we need to be realistic. We need to be realistic. We don't need to put our heads in the sand. We need to understand that I don't care how old or young we might be, we could die today. And if you don't believe that, then you're, not, then you're just not paying attention. Not paying attention to life. Life reminds us of this all the time. And I've been reminded a lot of this just over the last year or so. Just over the last year or so, I, I've had so many friends of mine. Some younger than me who have died suddenly and unexpectedly. And I'll give you one example. I was reminded of this reality back in July, almost exactly a year ago, in July of last year. I got up on, in July of last year, July 21st actually, and I got on Facebook, got on social media, and I went and started looking at the news feed, and I noticed something that really caught my attention. I noticed that a young man had died. And I knew this young man. I knew him actually quite well. His name was Sean Cavender. Maybe Brother Ben knows Sean Cavender. I knew Sean Cavender. He was a gospel preacher. And I actually first met him in 2011 when we were speaking at a lectureship in Indianapolis, Indiana. He and his future wife, Kristen, were actually just dating at the time. And Janice and I, we actually were able to have dinner with them a couple of times. And we spent a night with them just playing some games and talking to each other. And every now and then, Sean and I, we would just run into each other at different lectureships and things. And we were always nice to each other. And he was always very respectful and kind to me. And he was just a fine gospel preacher. Fine young gospel preacher. But last year in July, on the evening of July the 20th, at the conclusion of a lectureship in Athens, Alabama, he had just finished preaching earlier in that day. And he was leaving this lectureship, and his vehicle was struck at the intersection of the Bible school where the lectureship was being held, and he was killed instantly. He was killed instantly. And he was only 36 years old. And he was married, so he left behind a wife, but not just a wonderful wife. He also left behind two small kids. His life was gone just like that. 
And that was a reminder of something that, that I knew, but I just don't think about as much as I should. That was a reminder to me that we don't know when we're going to die. We don't know. Life is so fragile. We're not guaranteed to live to be 70, 80, or 90 years old. Any of us could exit out of this life today and being a Christian, my dear friends, it prepares you for that. It prepares you to die. It should take away your fear of death. It should instill within you as a Christian a mindset that's different than the mindset of the world. I mean, you, you know how the world thinks about death, right? The world views death as like the worst possible thing that can happen to you. The world is afraid to die. The world doesn't even like talking about talking about death. But, but as Christians, our mindset should be different. As Christians, we should not view death as a cursing, but we should view it as a blessing. We shouldn't be afraid to die because we follow somebody who's conquered death. We follow somebody who has the keys of death and Hades. We follow someone who has provided us with the hope of resurrection because he himself was raised from the dead. You see, Sean Cavender, this man I just told you about who passed away, he was a Christian. He was a follower of Jesus Christ. So that means he prepared himself for that untimely death because he devoted his life to the only person who can save his soul. And so why did I become a Christian? Well, I became a Christian because I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe Christianity is the truth. And I believe that I was a sinner and only he could save me. And I was ready to commit myself to him and I knew I was gonna die. And I wanted to be prepared to die at any moment. And so I hope those things will help you this morning. Mm -hmm. If you are a Christian, I hope this lesson has renewed some zeal and thankfulness about being a Christian. I hope it has helped you remember what being a Christian is all about and why you made the best decision you could have ever made in your life when you were baptized for the mission of your sins. Mm -hmm. And if you're not a Christian today, I hope this lesson will motivate you to become one. I hope it will at least motivate you to ask some questions, ask for a Bible study. Sit down and talk about these things because there's nothing more important in life than serving Jesus and getting ready for eternity. Let's pray about it. Almighty Father in heaven, our God, our creator, our Lord, our King, we bow our heads before you as your people, giving you the praise and the glory and the honor for being an awesome God, a wonderful God, a majestic God. The one who created all things and has made it possible through your son that we could be adopted into your family and be your children. Thank you, Father, for so much for your grace. Thank you so much for the fellowship we have as, as your people. Thank you for this opportunity you've even given us on this Lord's Day to worship and to study and grow and try to become more and more like your perfect son. Father, help us always remember why it is so important to be a Christian. Help us always be thankful for that. And help us, Father, always be conscious of our need to help other people become Christians and serve you with all their hearts because you are so good to all men and women. Thank you, Father, so much for this opportunity. Thank you for your love. Bless us as we continue to worship you as a family. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. 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 amen.